Let's go, Badger fans. Uh, the Badgers crush Maryland. The largest margin of victory in Big Ten tournament program history. Let's talk about a big win for the Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Locked On Badgers Live Post Game Edition, Wisconsin, Maryland. Uh, today's episode brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things just a little bit further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, let's get into it. So uh, Badgers thoroughly, thoroughly dominate. Maryland in a game that quite frankly was never close. Uh, let's talk about it. Um, let's, let's talk about players of the game, takeaways from it, Badgers moving forward. I think there's a couple really good feel good stories that come out of this too, but listen, we gotta, we gotta get excited for the win first. This is awesome. It's a good day for me. Come on in here, buddy. Get up on that line. This is awesome. Stop it. I can't. It automatically loops in that. I always try to catch it. All right. So let's start with, um, I want to start with my players of the game, right? And then get into your comments, talk about it. Uh, I have two, and I, I kind of couldn't decide. That. It's Stephen Crowell and John Blackwell for me. It's Stephen Crowell. Like, what have we been talking about on this show? What have I been talking about on this show? Shoot the freaking ball, Stephen. Three for three from three. Um, also was aggressive in the post. A couple of the, those early threes we got were out of Stephen Crowell getting the ball in the post, moving it around, finding the open man. Uh, he played great. Like the first the first offensive bucket of the game, what was it? It was Tyler Wall missing the shot, Stephen Crowell crashing the glass, finishing at the rim. I'm telling you, if we start a game with a Stephen Crowell offensive rebound, offensive putback, I'm going to feel so good about it. And then he comes out. Uh, he bangs a wide open three, but then later in the game, he had kind of a no thought three. That's what I keep wanting from Stephen Crowell. When he catches the ball, just shoot it once in a while. Don't think about it. You don't need to be wide open, dude. You're you're shooting 40%, over 40% from three on the, the season. Just shoot the ball. Three for three today. Unless he's not going to go three for three every day. That's not the point. The point is you got to be a threat out there. So oh, let's go. It was great to see him do well. And yes, before we even get into it, I, Maryland stinks. Maryland's not very good which is wild to me because they're, they're a basketball school. Like they, they should be better than they are. So I'm not, we're not going to make more out of this than it needs to be made. Just like the loss, the 22 point loss to Michigan is not, we're not that bad. We're also not as good as beating a Maryland team by 40, right? Like we shot 77% from three. It's actually six, 76.92%, but 77% from three. That's, that's insane. That's NBA jam. Like the ball is on fire in Fuego. So this doesn't mean everything's solved. This doesn't mean that you forget about the woes of February. This doesn't mean that this team is poised to go on a big run. It's it's one game with an unsustainable shooting percentage against a Big Ten team that played yesterday and isn't very good. Okay, fair? Everybody cool? It's still really fun to destroy somebody. And it feels like you, see, you hear the big sigh, you can almost see that with the players, right? It feels cathartic in a sense as a fan because this has been such a drag. Even the wins recently have been 74 to 70. They've been painful. Um, the losses have been like horrible. Some of these losses have been really bad. It feels cathartic to come out and just mollywop somebody, right? Just treat a team like they're a JV team. And that's what the Badgers did today. They were locked in. They were shooting lights out. Quite frankly, after that Purdue game, it feels like we were due for a game where you shot 70%. Because most, a lot of those looks in that Purdue game from three were pretty good. They were manufactured good looks for the most part. And at one point, we were like one of 16 to a 16 in that game. Well, this feels like the, the market correction to that. Water finds its level. Um, you're not going to shoot as poorly as you did against Purdue most games. But you're not going to shoot as well as you did against Maryland that those two pieces come together like like a lock on the great lakes right they level it out <sighs> I, it feels great to have regardless of what your big picture outlook on this team is by the way your big picture outlook shouldn't change over a maryland win even a dominant one it just doesn't move the needle one direction or the other but it feels good right it, as a fan it just feels good <sighs> so crowds player of the game uh john blackwell's my other one and literally on yesterday's show uh, was it yesterday's show or two shows ago? I forget. 
But this week, I talked about how I think Blackwell might be the best player on the team next year. I think he's going to start next year. I think he's a star in the making. And then he comes out today like he's so good. He's so smooth. And when I say star, I don't mean like NBA lottery pick. He's going to leave in a year. I mean like college star, right? Like the type of guy who's in college for three or four years and at the collegiate level is a consistent all-conference player. He does everything well. Defense, rebounding, hustle play, shooting, getting to the rim, get drawing free throws. That jab step three at the top of the key today, chef's kiss. Love it. All right, let's get comments. Let's let's talk about it. Let's, let's, let's enjoy this victory. Thomas Miller, good friend of the show, always has great comments. He says, JB's the best player on this team. And look what happens when Crowell plays well. When he plays well, we are very hard to beat. Completely opens up the offense. I've been telling you, Ryan. Now, Thomas has been saying that. I don't know if I've been disagreeing with that. Maybe I have. Um, I think we're on the same page, though. Like, when Crowell plays well, this team is incredibly hard to beat. And he was aggressive and played well today. Now, again, Crowell is matchup dependent. Okay? Like, holy crap, I need my cameras focusing and on focusing. We're just going to roll with it. I apologize if you're watching this live, uh, which everybody is right now. But Corral is matchup dependent, right? Against there's going to be some teams where he just is going to struggle, but he played really, really well today, and it was awesome to see. Badger T Hop, this is the team we need to be. Yeah, I mean, listen, we're, there's an element of this that's obviously unsustainable, but I also thought they were moving the ball really well. Like there's there's times this season where this offense gets a little stagnant. They they don't pass very well. They, they take a lot of one on one ISO shots. I thought they were finding really good looks offensively today. And you're not always going to shoot 77%, obviously, but the better looks you find, the higher percentage usually goes along with that. And I thought they were playing great offensively today. They were moving the ball. They were finding the open passers. They were being aggressive. There was a play in the second half, coming up the court, right? Big lead, Chucky Hepburn comes off a screen, gets to about the elbow, and just pulls up and shoots right away because it was a wide open shot in rhythm. They were hunting shots is my point. Like they weren't overpassing. They weren't being – like sometimes this offense gets a little passive, especially with the lead. They weren't doing that today. They were just finding good looks and then executing. It was awesome to see. Deborah says, great game by the Badgers. Um, appreciate you, Deborah, for always being in the chat as well. Insane three-point performance. Yeah, you're not going to see many of those. But when you do, it's a lot of fun, especially because of the slog we've been in. Like the month of February has felt like the swamp of sadness, right? And the Badgers have been – or or Turu? Or Turu? Is that the horse's name from the never-ending story, the one that gets stuck in the swamp of sadness? That's what February has felt like, and we just couldn't get out of it. This feels like we got out of that swamp a little bit, and it's just fun to see. Um, again, big picture, I don't think it moves the needle. Maryland's not a good team, but it's in the moment. It's a lot of fun as a fan just to see this team kind of get that that yoke off their shoulders. Uh, Chad Miller says, Badger team we've been waiting for for six weeks to see. Keep it going, boys. Yeah, we. this has been a minute since we've seen this team really click, and it was great to see. Carson says, let's get CE3 some more minutes tomorrow. Let's talk about Connor for a second, Carson, because I think this is a, a really good comment here. I was so happy to see Connor come in and play well. I was so freaking happy for that kid. I shouldn't say kid, for that young man. These aren't kids. Um, I'm 40, so they're all young to me. But I felt so good for him because – and by the way, he came out with a comment. I'll just put it up here. He, he uh, was talking to Badger Blitz. I think Benjamin Wargle. I want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. But he told uh, Badger Blitz that he has no plans to enter the transfer portal. He will return to the Badgers next season. He said there's no reason to enter a portal. I love this place. Man, hat tip to Connor Seijin. Because no matter where you are on how much you should be playing, how much he shouldn't be playing, what he's been good at, what he's not been good at, how much of that is great guard, Connor has handled this like an absolute pro. Right? There's so many players. Um, there's players at the NBA level that start sulking when they don't get time. Much more, much older and more mature players than Connor. Connor has handled this like a vet. He's not sulking. He's cheering on the bench. Like, yes, dude, I was so happy for him to go in there and bang those threes, get that end one. And I hope that leads to more playing time. I, I hope it does because he's doing it the right way. He's This is so easy to root for. Um, coming in, getting those points. Yes. Yes. Um, so, We'll see where, where it leads. I mean, he's clearly pretty far down the rotation right now, right? You saw he didn't get in the game until it was like eight minutes left in the second half, and they were up by 40. So he's pretty far down the rotation. That's that's what that tells you. But this is how this is how you get more minutes, right? You come in and you shoot. You come in and you score. You come in and you get to the rim. That's how you get more minutes. You earn it. And I just holistically, like zooming out, I was just so happy for him. I was just so happy for him to see him get success in those minutes because he really has handled this 
this situation this year where a lot of other players would have salted. They would have sniped to the media. They would have had a bad teammate. They would have entered the portal. They would have already quit on the team. He's done none of that. Like Connor has handled this incredibly maturely. And I think that's awesome. And that's why I was so stoked to see him get in there and bang some shots. We're going to take a quick break for the um, break for our friends of the show. Come back. I want to talk about Blackwell a little bit more, get your comments in, uh, talk about what this means going forward, a bunch more on today's Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our great friends over at Nissan Motors. Uh, listen, March Madness is coming up. And, you know, with March Madness coming up each week, we're going to be picking a team that stands out a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the new um, 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were here to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described, that's who we're going to talk about today, as an armada, the top-seeded team. It's as hardcore as it gets out there, so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. Be like the Cougars. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan uh, Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada. Go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, let's get your comments. By the way, if you hear a little kid yelling in the background, hopefully you don't too much, but it's my four-year-old that's outside playing because it is a really nice day in Connecticut today. Okay, let's get some more comments here. Uh, this one's from Sean Mullen. I always appreciate Sean in the chats as well. He said, pinch me. I've been waiting a while for this. Yeah, we all have. And this, I think that's the right reaction. Like, let's enjoy this. I, I, I see people who are frustrated because maybe this buys gray guard more of a leash or doesn't. I mean, Enjoy it for the players on the team. Like, this shouldn't move the needle one way or the other. A win against Maryland, a not good Maryland team, shouldn't move the needle. So let's enjoy it for the team and the players that got to go out there and have some fun, right? It was a great performance. Um, Ross says, maybe the squad finally stopped believing it was great and started to play well again. Brian said, have to remember that you are not as good as your best day, um, but this was fun. Hopefully they keep shooting well. I think that's a perfect comment, Brian, because you – you're never as good as your best film and you're never as bad as your worst film. Like they're, they're not a 40 point. They, this was a, this was a game they were favored by three and a half. Okay. So they're not a 40 point better team than Maryland, 30 point better team than Maryland, but you got to feel good going into Northwestern. Now you saw the bucket go ball go in your starters didn't have, by the way, your starters didn't have to play a ton of minutes, the grind of the big 10 tournament. And I think you saw it a little bit. Well, Maryland had a pretty easy opening game as well, but you know, if you had to play Hepburn 37 minutes a day and Crowell 35 and Wall 37, you don't feel as good going into Northwestern. I mean, those guys played like 18, 25, 26 minutes. So you're much fresher going into Northwestern. The bench got a lot of run. You have some confidence. Like, I think they'll beat Northwestern. And then you get a matchup with Purdue. And well, I, well, I'm, not, I'm not that excited about that. But you got to feel good going to Northwestern after today's game. Right. I think the Badgers will probably be favored in that one. Deborah says Hodges can't score from point blank. No, but I'll tell you this. That's another dude uh, had, I think, four offensive rebounds in his limited time in there. When he hit that second free throw, that's another guy I felt really excited for. That's his first point this year. And a guy who's been in the program for several years and you can see the people on the bench. You can always tell. Um, watch watch football highlights, basketball highlights. Look at the bench when somebody does something, and you can get an indication of what the team feels like about them. It's not that it's always completely obvious, but when they're up and down, they're jumping up, they're excited, that means generally he's probably a good dude. So I was really happy to see Hodges get a point, get get on the board, right, get in there, get some offensive rebounds. But, yeah, Deborah, like, there were some struggles uh, at point blank range with Hodges, um, and it's probably partially why he hasn't got a ton of run. But it was it was nice to see him get a bucket as well. Uh, Sebastian says, I doubt they'll keep up their shooting percentage, but it's great to see Blackwell and McGee being back as a game changer. Again, I, I, I've said this before on McGee. I, I think he obviously helps the team. I still tend to think he a little too much was made of McGee being gone, leading, and then you have this big slump and he gets back and you win right away. I think he's an important piece. I don't think he's necessarily the difference maker, but Blackwell, let's, let's dive a little bit more into that. Um, what, what doesn't he do well on the court? Right. I, I guess you can say he's not an elite athlete, which he's not. He's not an elite first step above the rim type of athlete for a guard, for a wing. But aside from that, he has a physical body, right? He can shoot really well from all three levels. He can get into the paint. He can beat people baseline. He gets to the free throw line. Defensively, he can play physical point of attack defense. I think, I think he gets, there's definitely times and there was a moment this game where he ball watches a little bit, which means when you're not on the ball, 
you start to stare at the, the basketball and you lose your guy weak side, you lose your guy on the backside and it leads to some open three point shots off skip passes, that kind of stuff. But he's a freshman. That stuff will clean up. He's going to be so good by the time he leaves Wisconsin and they got to make sure they keep him no matter what, like that scene from rounders, like you pay that man that his money, pay that man his money, whatever it takes in the NIO world, which is a, is a real conversation you have to have these days. You have to not only recruit players, you have to keep players. Blackwell is a worthy investment because he's going to be a thorn in the Big Ten side for three more years. And by the way, let's just be real. What a recruiting pickup by, by Greg Gard, right? There are misses on this roster. There are recruiting misses that Greg Gard is culpable for. It's why our front court depth isn't very good right now. But you also have to give him credit for John Blackwell. He identified a guy like John Blackwell's one of the best freshmen in the country. And you got to give Gard credit for that. Like he... That's an anchor piece who's going to be good on this team for several more years. Because I don't think he's going to be a guy who jumps to the NBA because of the lack of elite, excuse me, the lack of elite athleticism. So Smo says Final Four bust. Um, Let's do it, man. Let's do it. If listen, if we get to the Final Four, we will throw a big locked on Badgers giveaway. We'll give away all sorts of good stuff if we get to the Final Four. Um, I feel confident in saying I'll do that because I don't think we'll get there. But I'll, I'll be, I'll, we'll do it. I would, nothing would make me happier, right? Like, I'm not rooting for this team to fail because I want Great Guard out. I want to see how this team ends up this year and if they can make a run. By the way, the best sports moments, like your favorite teams, are the ones that surprise you. I, or maybe that's just me, but that's how I feel. Like, a team that comes out of nowhere and exceeds all expectations, or a team that's coming off a slump and you've written them off and then they have a resurgent run, like, those are the, like the most magical sports runs ever. And if this team can put it together, I still don't think they can. (laughs) Like, if we're talking Final Four, Elite Eight, or anything like that, this team has too many inconsistencies. But um, if they can put it together, man, nothing will make me happier. Zach Bart says, when Gilmore nails a three, it's a good day. Yes, sir. Um, And Zach and Smoas, always appreciate you guys. Pavel says, Maryland looked tired. Yeah, I mean, partially... I'll just be honest. You partially look tired when the other team is shooting 75% from three too, right? You start to look demoralized when the other team is, is on fire and not missing any shots. So I think there's an element of that. Like Maryland shouldn't be that tired. Their opening game was a blowout, right? They didn't have to stress that hard to get into this round, but it certainly doesn't help playing the day before. I agree with that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Sebastian, hundred percent agree. Also awesome to see less minutes for the starters. Daniel says, where did this team come from? It came from the beginning of the year. And this is one of the things I've said on a couple shows, right, is that the season is a long season. And when people talk about this team doesn't deserve to be in March or let's fire everything, I try to pull back and say, don't forget about the beginning of the year. Like that team is still here somewhere, just like this bad team is still here somewhere. And the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. So you're seeing flashes of what we did early in the year where we shot at an incredibly high percentage. We played a little harder defensively and we buried teams like this team early in the year was pretty good, right? Like we were six in the country. So there's still shades of that team alive in the, in the DNA of this locker room. They just have, they just lost their ability to kind of be, be that consistently. We saw a little bit of that today. And again, Maryland's bad. <laughs> like Maryland is, is an under 500 big 10 team. So I, we don't make too much out of, out of this game or I don't, but, yeah, it's flashes of what we saw earlier in the year. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going here. Thomas says, uh, with that shooting performance, we beat a lot of teams, even Purdue and UConn. I don't know if we beat UConn. Uh, I think so. I think, but I think you're right. If we shot this well, we beat Purdue. Having seen UConn in person, and I'm not, listen, I'm no expert on on UConn or Purdue. And I think UConn's a tier above Purdue, and I think Purdue's a tier above Wisconsin. I UConn is really good. But, yeah, if you shoot – listen, you're not wrong, though, Thomas. If you shoot 77% from three, you can beat anybody. I mean, you could probably beat the Washington Wizards. Apologies to Johnny Davis, who – oh, gosh, why did he go to the Wizards? What have they done to our boy Johnny Davis? That's a side note. All right, I have to take a quick break for the show. Uh, Friends of the show, come back, talk a little bit more about Connor, and uh, take more of your comments. Honestly, let's just celebrate this together as a community. I'm Because why not? You don't – you don't get many games where you beat another Big Ten team by 30 in a tournament. So uh, we're going to take a quick break for our friends of the show and come back, finish off, and talk a little bit about what this means going forward. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Fire TV. I've talked about Fire TV. I have Fire TV, right? I love it when we are advertising for things that I use, that I personally like and I enjoy because I can talk about it from the heart. 
Um, and that's Fire TV, like your sports destination, Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. There's an amazing viewing experience, uh, smart, TVs, smart TVs, Alexas. You just plug your stick in, your Amazon Fire Stick. Um, the user interface is incredibly easy. You don't have to set up anything. You just point and click and go. Um, access to opening weekend of baseball, college basketball tournaments. You're going to want to have a Fire TV for all your sports, plus a ton more. And Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver constant supply of the latest videos for your favorite sports fans all for free. And that includes all of us over at the Locked On Network. In most pro leagues, most college conferences, it is phenomenally easy to get all the entertainment you want. You dive into game analysis, highlights, keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports, cooking videos, um, gaming, travel. It's all there. It's all there. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. Today's episode also brought to you by our great friends over at eBay Motors. And if I've talked about, yeah, you know, like for the long timers on here who have sat through my stories of me hitting a tree on purpose to get out of, of getting yelled at for being late to work, who have heard me talk about hitting a guardrail twice with a car, the same car, like eBay Motors is designed for me. The right parts, the right fit, the right prices. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers, but it's there for people who occasionally hit things. Like, when they're driving <laughs> um and you know you get all the parts you need everything you want it's simple it's fast it's easy you get the best prices the best selection you can shop from home you don't have to go to the store and talk to some guy who doesn't want to be there he may not even have your part in the warehouse and he's going to give you whatever he's got you know don't don't waste time with any of that spend time on better things building a lego set or watching lockdown badgers whatever it is save time get the right parts over at ebay motors the right parts the right fit the right prices ebay guaranteed fit is only available to us customers eligible items only exclusions do apply ebay motors the right parts the right fit the right prices all right let's keep celebrating here badger fans uh let's just get comments Let, let's just get comments here um Thomas Miller said, we have a puncher's chance if we shoot 35% in that Purdue game from three. I agree. Smo says, when Crowell plays well, the Badgers are completely different. Also agree. Now, the problem is, like Crowell, I mentioned this earlier, Crowell is, he's matchup dependent. Like, you just cannot expect him to play well against bigger physical athletic centers. You just can't. Now, that doesn't mean he should be as absent as he was in the ED game. That was unexcusable. But I, I kind of think of Crowell as kind of a platoon hitter in baseball. Right when he's facing, let's say, a guy who's great against left-handers, he's going to do really well. But if you put him in there against right-handers, he's going to struggle. That's why you need another five in the portal this offseason. You need someone who can help Crowell in the matchups that aren't advantageous for him. So today was a good matchup for him. In good matchups, he does well. In poor matchups, lately he's been a little MIA, and he needs to be better than that. He needs to be more consistent. But yeah, I agree with you, Smo. Uh, when he plays well, the Badgers are different. They're better. They're hard to beat. Because when he plays well, the shooters play off of him. And then teams get into defensively, they get into the kind of quadri quandary of do I double crowl and leave a shooter? Do I not? And then crawl's making post shots. It, it puts defenses in a hard spot. And he played really, really well today. Um, yeah, played really, really well today. Carson says a one day break might actually be good for the team considering how hot they were today. That's a great point. I, there, was, there was a moment in this game where I was almost like, man, you got to save some of these shots for tomorrow. Like, uh, but yeah, I, I like not having a big break right now. Uh, I agree with that. Bo Dragon says Maryland screwed us. Now we'll have guard for another year. I you're already having guard for another year. I'm telling you, guard was not getting fired after this year. You not after making the tournament. Um, so I apologize for your loss here, Bo. But but you got to be at least a little excited to see the Badgers hit shots, right, Bo? Mikey says Klesman was good on the bench last year. He belongs there. I I think Klesman is a better bench piece. Um, and that's no knock on Klesman. I just, I would rather have Blackwell in the starting lineup next year and Klesman coming off the bench and, and Kles and still Klesman getting a lot of minutes off the bench, like Klesman, but I, I that's kind of where I wanted to go. And I kind of think Blackwell's going to start next year. I think he's going to be too good not to. Let's keep going here. I'll see if I have any other comments. Um, <laughs> Daniel says the, the team looked pretty good when the shots are falling. Yeah. Ain't that the case? Greg Lincecum, I love this comment from Greg, friend of the show, great dude. Look at how many shots we made with assists. And I kind of talked about that early in the game, and I meant to actually go back and look at the assist holes for the game, but it felt like all of our threes were coming off post looks. It felt like all of our threes were coming off uh, penetration looks, right? Wall had a couple feeds to threes. Hepburn had a feed to a three. Uh, Crowell had feeds to three. Like, 
this team was just pinging the ball around. It was purposeful. It felt like they had a, like there was a real plan and they were executing it and it was beautiful basketball. Now the shots falling was kind of the obvious side benefit of that. But even if the shots weren't falling, it, the offense was really moving the ball and it felt like the, the space, the pacing was, was strong. Like we were taking shots when they were there. Occasionally on offense, we don't do that, right? We get into late shot clock stuff and then we end up playing hero ball a lot. That has happened a lot in February. It felt like, so it felt like the pacing was there. It felt like we were getting efficient looks. Um, it felt like we were pushing in transition when those opportunities were there. I, I thought it was a great offensive performance. And I totally agree, Greg. They were really flicking the ball around today. All right, let me find some more comments here. Dom said starter sat for 11 minutes of game time today. Um, Bo Dragon said, great interview with the bald recruiter dude. Brian Smith, the bald recruiter dude. <laughs> Thank you, Bo. Yeah, Brian... Brian's awesome, man. Brian Smith is a great dude. He speaks his truth. Deborah uh, says Black will seize the court really well. I agree. I think I think it's an underrated part of his game, Deborah. I think he nailed it. Like he has secondary uh, playmaking ability. That's something that I thought Johnny Davis was really good at as well. He's not a point guard, but he's somebody that he he can see the court. He when he penetrates, he's able to find other open shooters. Um, and I think Black will only get better and better in that sense. I, I think he's awesome, quite frankly. And I think in a year or two, you can see Blackwell playing some point as well. Not full-time, but some minutes there, absolutely. You see him break the press. You see him handle pressure. Uh, I think he's got some point guard abilities, and he's got the size to do that. So uh, I think there's a big future there for sure. Mm -hmm. Jan says, uh, Jan Volk, who, another good friend of the show, one of the things Blackwell does better than other guards is go to the offensive board instead of watching. Yeah, he's super aggressive. And – He's got a great feel, right? He reads the ball well. He's a really good rebounder for his size. I think another thing that he does really well, now that we're just on a, a John Blackwell love fest, but I love it. Like, I think he's a star. Uh, he moves without the ball really well. He's a, he's probably the best cutter on the team. Him, him and Connor. Connor cuts pretty well, too. But Blackwell's a little bigger. I think he's a little more easily. He is a little more rugged. So he can cut into the paint off um, a double uh, from the post. He can cut off the paint. He does a great job patiently. Two feet, jump stop, finish through contact. Um, he gets into bodies, which is why he generates so many free throw attempts. Yeah, so I think it's a great point, Jen. He definitely will go after the offensive glass. He doesn't ball watch. And then he's a great cutter. Like, he does a lot of the the little IQ things on a basketball court that not a lot of guys on this team do. Not a lot of – well, I shouldn't even say that. Not a lot of freshmen in college basketball do. Heck, not a lot of upperclassmen in college basketball do. Like, he's really well-rounded. Really, really well-rounded. Um, okay, Uh let me try to get some more comments from people that I did not see here. PMW Welding said, this team looks like a very tight bunch. If they stay hot through the Big Ten tourney, it's contagious. Won't shock me if they make a run to the Elite Eight. Let's go. Let's go, PMW. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give them credit for this. And Greg Gar gets a slice of this credit. I think it's a good point. This team didn't fall apart, right? You have that February where the fan base is chirping, where I'm chirping, where people are getting frustrated, where you're getting beat by bad Big Ten teams, Michigan. This team with a lesser culture, a lesser, a lesser locker room could have fallen apart pretty easily. We've seen other teams do it, and they didn't. This team absolutely did not fall apart, and Gregard gets a slice of that credit. Bo Dragon says, bottom line, hot hand versus garbage team with no heart. It meant virtually nothing. So big picture, I agree. Uh, like, I've agreed with you, Bo. Like, uh, and if anyone else is kind of – this doesn't mean that – this shouldn't move the needle for you wherever you are on the big picture outlook of this program. But in the moment, it's still hella fun. Right in the moment, it's still a ton of fun to see your team shoot 77% from three. Um, to see Connor get going a little bit, to see Hodges out there get a bucket, to see Winter. Nolan Winter was some good minutes today, right? This was one of the this was nice Nolan Winter flashes. Um, so that was nice to see as well. P says Bo's bringing the, the fire today. Yeah, that's that is Bo's always bringing the fire. Um, let me see if we got more comments. We got much more comments again. I'm not going to get to all of it. But I do appreciate every single person um, chiming in as always. Angelo Cortez says, Ryan, do you think uh, they should have let the stuff come in sooner? Yes. I always think that. I It drives me nuts. And by the way, really quick on the Purdue game. Uh, we didn't talk about this post game, but I thought Matt Painter was insane to leave Edie and, and Braden Smith in the game after they had tweaked ankles in a game that meant nothing to them. I thought I thought that was peak insanity on Painter's part, right? With With a team that could potentially win a national title. And you see Zach Eady tweaking, tweaking ankle in a game that 
I mean, I know it's senior night, but in the big picture, it means nothing to you, and he's already played. Get him out of the game and, and wrap him in bubble wrap. I would, if I was a Purdue fan, I would have lost my mind um, because it just feels like an unnecessary risk. There was a moment in this game they were up thirty in the second half, and John Blackwell's still out there, and he took a fall. And I'm like, dude, we don't need Blackwell in this game right now, man. Um, so yes, I do, but a lot of coaches don't coach like that, Angelo. Um, and I and I get it because at one point in his career, he probably lost the game when he was up twenty with four minutes left. And that'll always haunt him. So I did think so, but I mean, I, I'm not going to crush him for it. Uh, let's see. All right. I think we'll wrap it there. Again, we're at 30 minutes, which is usually where I try to keep most of these anyway. Uh, Rob Jansen. Here's a good one. Rob Jansen, another solid game for Chucky today. Eight assists, two turnovers. Let me say this, though. Let me say this. There were still too many careless turnovers in this game for my liking. Like, again, not... When you win, not everything is perfect. And when you lose, not everything's terrible. There was a couple really sloppy turnovers in today's game where, again, you just got to clean that up. And that's been an issue all year for the Badgers. Now, if you shoot 77%, it doesn't matter. But if you're shooting 40%, those careless turnovers lose you a game. So I thought the turnovers were at times were still a little iffy. But listen, we're not going to complain too much when you win by 30 um, big game for the Badgers. We will be here tomorrow. Obviously, another reaction show. Can't wait. Um, this was fun. This was fun. Let's enjoy this moment. And then we'll talk about Gray Guard in the future of the program later. But I am enjoying this moment. I'm enjoying this win on Wisconsin. And we'll talk later.